I have to admit, I didn't anticipate this. Animal Crossing New Horizons actually added more villagers. I'm in awe. I can't believe this happened. I really didn't think they would add more of them to this game. But considering villagers are as popular as they are, with players having their own dreamies and ranking videos about the best and worst choices, it would be foolish of them not to. That said, this is a fairly small amount of new faces, which is a shame considering how fantastic a lot of these new designs are. But I'm grateful for anything. Hmm. Just reviewing a dozen or so new villagers doesn't seem like enough. Alright, I'm gonna be as comprehensive as I can. In this video, I'm going to review every new and returning villager in New Horizons, Sanrio villagers included. But I'm going to go further than that and also cover every villager I didn't talk about in part one. I'm even going to revisit and update some of my previous takes. Feelings can change with time and perspective after all, so consider this video my final rankings and definitive best and worst, completing the entire selection of villagers available. Be warned that this video is entirely subjective and may take a character you are emotionally attached to and drown them in garbage. Let it be known I fully respect anyone's personal tastes on who they enjoy and certainly don't intend to insult anyone in expressing my sometimes savage feelings. Have fun! The New Villagers As I said, I was overjoyed to see eight new villagers added to this game, and the best part is how exceptional these new characters are. The villager designers clearly know their stuff at this point, because these are some top-tier additions. I'm absolutely starting with Sasha, the cutest dang thing since Sherb. You gotta be kidding me with this guy. Look at his little tufts of hair and angelic sweetheart eyes. His teal coloration is beautiful with a lovely name to match, immediately taking a spot as one of the best lazy villagers and deserving of all the recognition he's getting. A freaking plus. Shino is another absurdly popular highlight and, no kidding, red horns, gorgeous eyes, classy geisha motif, masterful, effortlessly appealing, and really cute. The peppy personality isn't what I would have guessed, but it surprisingly fits her really well. She wears it in a different way from the traditional Peppy, and considering I've never been a fan of most of those, she knows easily a top pick of the type. For another all-star, and easily one of my newest favorites, is the charming and adorable Tian Sheng. For a species with hardly any notable members, he easily takes the top spot, lifting up the entire monkey species. Look at his happy little face. His cheerful orange colors and cute expression are just so such good vibes. He even says woo woo, woo woo. It's rare that I gush this hard, but dang, these designs earned it. Ion is up next, a very classy new squirrel with a serene presence, and was practically engineered to be desirable. That starry sparkliness is a great fit for dreamy towns, a fairly common aesthetic, and she even glows in the dark a little? Man, they pulled out all the stops for these new villagers, and she's another instant icon. The sisterly personality has been in desperate need for some new attractive designs since, well, basically since it was created. Thankfully, we now have Quinn, a superb sisterly option. These are some really gorgeous purples, and that dependable sister vibe fits perfectly with her design. Even in a species as strong as the eagles, she's one of the best. Oh my god, a new octopus and a robot on top of it? Talk about an instant classic. Cephalobot is wicked cool, with a gnarly, futuristic house to match. Smug is also a very funny personality to give him, and totally fits. Very nicely done. Petri's up next, and we're definitely coming down from the praise parade, but that's not to say Petri's bad. I'm just not really into the scientist motif. I do appreciate how different she is, though, for a snooty in particular, and her eyes look lovely when you put different glasses on her. If they were clearly visible all the time, she'd rank a lot higher, but either way, she's one of the better mice villagers. Dang, this is going fast. We're already at the last of the newbies with Marlo, who's undoubtedly my least favorite of the eight new faces. But that being said, I don't think there's anything wrong with his design. I appreciate the Mafia boss aesthetic he's going for, and it helps him stand out from the other hamsters and other villagers in general. This is a simple case of just not for me, but even so, this is a novel theme, executed well and with a strong identity that a lot of town designers will be interested in. That's all eight new villagers covered, and as I expressed earlier, they did a great job with these. They've already left a huge impact in the community and are some of the most desirable options out there. But we also have some other freshly added villagers that are a bit more familiar to series veterans. Returning villagers. Here we go, another eight new options, but these guys are actually from older entries in the series. Animal Crossing
Crossing did this once before in New Leaf, bringing a whopping 50 villagers back at the time. That said, about half of the returnees were pretty underwhelming. So how'd they do this time? Well, actually a lot better. It's great when this happens because every villager is someone's cherished friend, so some of these are really going to mean a lot to some people. Let's start with Ace, who's actually one of the first villagers I ever had when I first played Animal Crossing on the GameCube. I always thought he had a stylish simplicity to his design, so I'm pretty happy to see him back, and wonder why he was ever left behind in the first place? He's one of my favorite birds. Azalea's a fantastic choice to bring back, in a species that lacks many standout members. Soothing colors with a relaxed, classy expression. She's an appreciated snooty option with an enchanting name. Roswell's a strange but interesting addition to the alligators, being their first smug. This has to be one of the most visually captivating patterns in the game, and I'm not surprised he's already getting a fan base. Also, big yes to these freaky eyes. These kinds of little quirks add a lot more than you'd think. Chadwick's pretty cute, a bit doofy looking, but the good kind of doofy. He reminds me of a clumsy house pet that always has a sweet look in their eyes, just wanting to be loved. Not a fan of the belly button, but he's one of the better penguins for sure. Rio's okay. She doesn't stand out much from the other ostriches, but her color palette is solid, particularly the rainbow tail feathers. The stick-on decal hair strikes again though, which brings her down quite a bit. That brown just clashes so hard with everything else, but the cheek star does make up for it a little. Wait, what? I did not expect Fret to be this cute. Even though his house is a complete train wreck, he has a surprisingly well-balanced design, with nicely chosen colors and features. He says, Goshers? Jeez, he's already one of the best members of his own species. Oh look, another koala to throw on the pile. You know what though, she honestly looks pretty good. I'd even go so far as to say she's one of the best koala designs. I like her color, flower, and general vibe, but what's up with the way her face is sectioned off? It's like she's wearing a koala one. Onesie. And at the bottom of the returning villager barrel, we have Zoe. Cause we needed this face back. I don't mind the turquoise, but her expression is somewhat off-putting. The longer I stare, the more I'm not a fan, and she's undoubtedly the weakest villager design returning. Still, these are mostly great choices, with each of them adding something new to their species. Though I will say it's a shame there are still some all-star picks that have yet to return. Just look at Pierre, I'd love to have him back. Champ the monkey, Sunny the frog, Meow the king. Cat? Ah oh, well. I'm happy with what we did get, and you never know when more old faces will show up in the future. Sanrio Villagers. If you're not aware, Sanrio refers to a Japanese company that includes well-known properties like Hello Kitty and My Melody, as well as a bunch of other things I'm not familiar with. In any case, it's a crossover that gave Animal Crossing six new villagers, boasting tons of unique new items representing Sanrio properties. Honestly, I've never been a fan of crossovers like this. I value my immersion in most games that I get into, but at the very very least, these additions aren't as on the nose as they could be. It's not like Hello Kitty herself is walking around, so I'm thankful for that. But then you look at what we did get. With all that said, I'm not super impressed with these overall. Or I suppose more accurately, three are delightful additions, and three aren't. Let's start with Marty, no doubt the best of the bunch. I mean, he speaks for himself. He's a very charming little bear cub. He has a nice, distinct color palette, and the shape of his hat combined with his round face make him look like a little honeypot. Adorable as hell. And not only a Sanrio standout, but one of the cutest villagers in the game. Etoile is another wonderful pick. A dreamy sheep with really pretty colors and a soothing atmosphere. She's easy to work into many town themes and highly considerable. Chai is the last of the appreciated inclusions. A tea-themed elephant who I, funnily enough, find more appealing than Tia. Her friendly face and tasteful blue and white colors are a treat for the eyes, and she just seems like a nice friend to have around. For a collaboration I wasn't into in the first place, these three villagers villagers more than justify the partnership, but the other three? Eh. Toby is okay, but I don't like anything about his outfit, or his hair, or his ugly yellow and green color combo. And his catchphrase is ribbit, now you're just messing with my head. I like the little ghost thing he has. So there you go. Chelsea's a tremendous step down. What is going on with her colors and outfit? Her hairstyle looks so stupid and clashes horrendously with everything else. Pink arms coming out of a shirt with a different tone of pink that doesn't match at all? Bunny ear headband? I could see that working on, oh, I don't know, a top tier design bear Pokemon, but it doesn't work here, making for a very poorly put together villager in a species that's pretty hard to mess up. We end with Rilla, or should I say really? You're gonna 
gonna make Hello Kitty a gorilla villager of all things? This feels like an attack. I guess she's better looking than your run-of-the-mill gorilla, run of the gorilla, but that's not saying a whole lot. These aren't the most inviting facial features. Cruel, but come on, what a slap in the face to Hello Kitty. And hilariously, she's still one of the best gorillas. So that counts for something. Three out of six ain't bad though, and Marty, Etoile, and Chai are truly cherished additions. So where do we go from here? Well, it's time to revisit every species of Animal Crossing New Horizons, to review any previously glossed over villagers while also making some changes along the way. Remember, these are my final, definitive, best and worst villager rankings. Here we go. Alligators. I covered every alligator before, but looking at them again, this is actually a very well done species, with no major flaws among them. I take back what I said about Boots being one of the worst. He's really not bad. With an enthusiastic but kind of off vibe, I can get behind. Nice shade of green, too. Alfonso remains the weakest gator, but with that considered, this is overall a solid selection. The best alligators are Sly, Gale, Dell, and Roswell. The worst, Alfonso. Ant Eaters. Only three to go. I glossed over Antonio before, but he's probably the most popular anteater, with a rather personable design. The stripe patterns on his arms and head look great with the gray palette, and his easygoing attitude makes for an appealing friend. I can see why he's such a fan favorite. Annabelle looks like she'd be kind of annoying, unsurprisingly sporting the peppy personality. I do like her pattern and coloration though. She presents more as a pangolin because of it, and uniqueness is always welcome. Annalisa is designed for very specific aesthetics so not a lot of people are gonna want her in their town. Her appearance does nail what it's going for, but I'm not into the porcelain doll look myself. Looking at them now, I was pretty harsh on this species before, even claiming they're one of the six worst in the game. They're a lot more unremarkable than offensive though, so I'm removing that title. Congratulations, Anteaters. We'll see who you pass it to later. The best Anteaters are Olaf and Antonio. The worst, Snooty and Cyrano. Bears. Oh my god at the amount of comments I received about Teddy. Everybody really likes Teddy, and sure, whatever, he's chill. Agreeable facial features with a comfortable shade of brown. Solid bear, bro. I can see how people could get attached to him, but I have no experience with this guy, so he's merely average in my eyes. Charlize. I like colorful villagers, but she's awfully boring, and doesn't look too bright either. A lukewarm villager if I've ever seen one. Ike. I don't like him very much. He looks close-minded, with an unlikable experience expression and just off-putting vibe. He's one of the weakest members I failed to call out before. Last up is Groucho, and sure, he's a villager you can have in the game. Blue and orange line hair and no, thank you. I previously dumped on Ursula, but after giving her another look, there's a real sweetness in those eyes I can't deny. I can see what there is to like about her. In lame haircut or otherwise, she's certainly not one of the worst members of this species. Tutu still is and can rot in the void. The best bears are Megan, Pinky, and Grizzly. The worst, Chow, Ike, and Tutu. Burbs. Lot of birds we skipped over. Not surprising considering how unexceptional many of these are. Sparrow is different, but I'm not digging his vibe. There's no warmth coming from his cold, soulless eyes. Funnily enough, Peck feels more like a buddy, even though his eyes are a lot more empty. He has a simple design, and makes for a good, understated villager. Twiggy's also pretty plain. I've gotten her a few times, and she's okay. If only her eyebrows were fixed at another angle so she didn't look flustered all the time. Robin's another adequate choice, but also looks half asleep, and not in a cute way. She's probably one of the most forgettable villagers in all honesty. But these are nice blues. Admiral makes me think of Sam the Eagle from the Muppets. Just me? He's innocuous enough, but another unremarkable member. Last up is Jacob. This combination of red, white, yellow, and green gives off an energized aura, and he has an expression that's both sociable and mellow. He seems like he'd be a good friend. The best birds are Jay, Ace, Midge, and Piper. The worst, Jitters, and Anchovy. Bulls. Only two left. Stu is not only inoffensive for the species, but actually has a bit of charm. I glossed over him before, but he's probably the most universally appealing of all six bulls due to his approachable, some would say cute, expression and pleasant colors. While he's not a top pick for me, I do like how much his horns stand out. Coach remains with his unshaven stubble, which unfortunately is a design choice that almost certainly makes a villager wildly unappealing. He could certainly be worse, but there's not much to appreciate 
it here, and is one of the lower points of this minor species. The best bulls are Rodeo and Vic. The worst, T-Bone. Cats. Despite being the largest single species, I actually touched upon nearly all of the cats the first time around, with just these three left to cover. Mitzi's up first, notable for how adorable she is. I'm surprised I didn't bring her up before. Her friendly vibe pairs effortlessly to her normal personality, and I like the soft charm to her blue and white pattern. She gives off a comforting presence. Kitty's another good choice. She's one of the more natural looking cats, sporting that sassy lovableness they're known for. This is a tasteful design. Last is Tom, who doesn't do much for me, but he's not bad and does have nice fur patterns. I suppose I just find him unremarkable in a species that has an absurd amount of outstanding members. My only change to this group would be Cat. Looking at her again, she's a bit too much of an acquired taste. Her gremlin face normally wouldn't bother me, but the ugly outfit she has in New Horizons adds a completely different flavor to her I'm not at all a fan of, easily securing her as one of the worst members of this species. But that's it for the cats. Alright, fine. Kiki is probably my most controversial villager opinion, and giving her another look, she's okay. I'll give you that, even considering the deer in headlights expression and grandpa sweater. There you go, Kiki fans. The best cats are Mo, Olivia, Rudy, Kit Kat, Tangy, and Anka. The worst, Cat and Monique. Chickens. Of course, I have a friggin' handful of these chickens left. They're totally average. I previously labeled Egbert as the worst, but that's not to say he's bad. He does have that endearing, absent-minded quality. But man, these chickens are just so plain, I can barely find anything to criticize. Well, okay. Goose is also somewhat unappealing. I wouldn't say either of these villagers are badly designed, but they're the weakest of the chickens. For a friendlier option, Ava is rocking a warm maternal vibe that's actually pretty uncommon for villagers. I could see someone getting attached to her. She seems like a sweetheart. Benedict is alright. I do like how minimalist his design is, with a tasteful coloration backing it up. Not bad. Plucky stands out due to her island theme, but I'm willing to bet she's one of those villagers almost no one knows the name of offhand, unless you, like, have her on your island yourself. I guess that means we're firmly in villager territory, but her simple, serviceable features make for a fine enough choice. Becky's one of the better options, and stands out a lot as the only only chicken with a more unnatural coloration. She wears it well though. It's easy on the eyes and helps pull together her snooty characterization. Last is Brafina, who I didn't care for at first but don't mind as much now. She's definitely one of the more creative chickens with a unique style, adding to villager variety, and that's always nice. Even though these are mostly functional designs, the chickens would kill for a few icons. The best chickens are Ken and Knox, the worst Egbert and Goose. Cows. Congratulations, cows. You are now one of the six worst species in Animal Crossing. <laughs> yup, this is who the anteaters pass their baton to. And I mean, come on, is this really surprising? There's only four of them for starters, without a single top-tier choice available. Though you wouldn't know with how many tipper defenders are out there. More power to you if she floats your boat. Honestly though, looking at these now, I'm positive Naomi is worse than tipper. She looks like she'd have quite the venomous tongue behind your back, and her creepy eyes and dorky hair are equally repellent. Yeah, tipper is a luxury compared to her. And then we have Norma, who, you know what, is actually a pretty nice looking cow. Tame, but fairly cute, with simple, likable features. Still, when these are your highlights, it's easy to see why you're one of the weakest species in the game. The best cows are Patty and Norma. The worst, Naomi. Cubs. There are quite a lot of notable cubs I didn't bring up before. Blue Bear's the most obvious. She's actually really popular, and okay, sure, she's certainly designed to be appealing, but I don't know, she's not that cute, and patently generic. More so than a lot of other villagers who are just cute, goodnight. June is another popular cub, also generically cute, but a lot more basic. She's a great option, but I'm not a beach person, so island themes aren't gonna win me over. Pudge is lackluster. At least he has an identity with that peculiar expression of his, and the decal hair is happily not too jarring since it's so close to the color of his body. Aw, Poncho's adorable. What a delightful little guy. Cody is like a disgusting knockoff Poncho. He fares a lot worse due to that smug look in his eyes, and dude, really? A cowboy vest? Not a fan. Murphy makes me want mint chocolate chip ice cream, and that's only ever a plus. A fairly unknown cub, but solid all the same. Cherry's noteworthy for her likable 
smirk that gives me the impression she's a friend you can tell secrets to. I must admit, the quality of the cubs has been quite consistent going through these. There's less filler than I remember, with a lot of cute faces and simple charms. We still have Vladimir though, and he's not exactly a treat for the eyes. Kind of like Beryl, they both have that caveman quality going on. Beryl didn't place in the worst previously, but it's clearer than ever that these are two of the lowest points of this species. Rejoice, Tammy and Olive. The best cubs are Marty, Judy, Stitches, Pico, and Maple. The worst, Barreled, Cody, and Vladimir. Deer. Three to go in this fantastic species, so let's start with Eric, who's honestly a very nice looking villager. This is one of those understated, tasteful designs that could fit just about anywhere, and his unique moose antlers help him stand out a lot from the pack. He's a quality pick. Bruce looks like he's got a bit of an attitude, but he's rocking some swanky fur and horn patterns. He's not too interesting, but totally chill. Lopez remains, and you know what? He should have been the worst deer in part one. I said Deirdre was the easy low point of this species before, but I do take that back. I see now the simple appeal of her aesthetic, but I don't like the vibes coming from Lopez one bit. Even though he has pretty snazzy eyes and colors, he looks completely untrustworthy, like he'd sell you jewelry made out of tinfoil. I might even pick Chelsea over over him. Oh wait, never mind. That's right. She looks like that. Regardless, they make up the lowest points of this otherwise exceptional selection. The best deer are Diana, Fauna, Shino, Bam, and Zell. The worst, Chelsea and Lopez. Dogs. Oh my god, I didn't talk about nine dogs last time. Woof. Villagers incoming. I say that, but a lot of the dogs I passed by before are totally sufficient designs, and many have their own fan bases. Here's an obvious example. Goldie. And yeah, she's alright. A bit plain for my taste, but if you're a dog person, this is probably a top consideration. Daisy's up there too, with a similar vibe, but also sporting some cool frosted fur tips. Bones has more fans than I would have thought, and that's not to say he's bad, he just doesn't really stand out to me. He's your typical, friendly, spotted dog. Walker's more my speed and looks great. His simple, endearing design secures him as one of the better options of this species, really capturing that loyal friend quality. Maddie's simple style works well enough, but she's a bit forgettable. A lot of the dogs were evidently made for more understated palettes. Porsche's a Dalmatian, which is certainly of note. Her ritzy looking coat helps nail that snooty personality she's going for. Not bad. Butch is fine? He's a classic villager, but generic all the same. Shep gets points for his unique shagginess, but he's also giving me freeloader vibes. The jean jacket's a red flag. That leaves Marcel. And... he's okay. I wouldn't have him in my town or anything, but considering how unappealing his theme could have been, he's making the best of it. Hang on, it looks like I have a correction to make. In part one, I labeled Cookie as a normal villager, and that is false. She's a peppy villager, which actually helps her stand out more. The best dogs are Cherry, Biscuit, Lucky, Fret, and Cookie. The worst, Benjamin. Ducks. I almost put the ducks as one of the six worst species in the game. There are 17 ducks, and maybe a fourth of them have pleasing designs. This species has a lot of dead air, so I'm not surprised I still have this many to cover. Nearly half, in fact. With all that said, some of these are okay. Mallory's a good start. She has a nice enough appearance, with soft colors, an adequate, somewhat understated villager. Durbin looks doofy, but there's something a little little endearing about him. It's similar to the feelings I had with Hazel in part one. Pom Pom's passable and probably one of the most plain villagers of them all. Her design is remarkably uninteresting, but you could do worse. Miranda gives off a snobby vibe with a garish shade of pink to match. Her hair is kind of nice and she's on the better looking side of the ducks, but that's not much of a feat. Gloria's a much worse take with a similar vibe while being a whole lot tackier. There's not much to like here. Weber is okay, I guess, but I'm noticing now just how much I don't like the general shape of the duck model, especially their bills, and I think it's a big reason why so many of them aren't as appealing as they could be. Like on all accounts, Weber is a pretty generic villager, but I don't care for him more than the usual run-of-the-mill design, and it's because of the duck model. There are of course some awesome ducks, I won't deny that, and I can see their bills and form being exactly why some people find them so adorable. But for me, it's an unwieldy model that more often than not detracts from their overall designs. But I digress. Getting back
back to Weber, I heard someone pronounce his name Weber once, and it's all I can think of whenever I see him now. Weber. Jeez, look at this lame -o. Quilson is like a more repellent version of Derwin's idea. His dorky hair and booger green coloration combine to make an easily skippable villager. I guess that leaves Joey, who... Ugh. Welcome to the bottom of the barrel. I really don't like this one's face. He kept his head down last time while I was cleaning up these messes, but dude, you're wearing a diaper. I could see some people finding him cute in like a baby kind of way, but he's a hard pass for me. The best ducks are Bill, Ketchup, and Molly. The worst, Freckles, Joey, and Pate. Eagles. It's funny that the eagles are next because they basically have the opposite situation from the ducks, and that their model is so aesthetically pleasing it's actually hard to screw up their designs. This is one of the best species for a reason, and it's particularly impressive that even with 10 members, none of them are unappealing. We have three left to cover. Amelia's lovely, with a flashy red face and refined dignity. She's an above average snooty villager for sure. A personality well paired to this species, even though she's the only one. Buzz's grumpy attitude is also really fit. Fitting. But he still has a dependable, actually looking out for you kind of vibe, nailing the role of the grumpy but caring curmudgeon. Lastly is Pierce, a classic member of the group, well considered colors, nicely placed features, another straightforward, top notch eagle design. It's no wonder I had a hard time picking the worst before, and as I said then, Frank isn't bad, he's just the low point of what we have, and proves how strong this lineup truly is. The best eagles are Apollo, Celia, and Quinn. The worst, Frank. Elephants. Five adorable elephants to cover. Let's start with Margie. Probably the most famous elephant I glossed over previously. And dang, she's got some poppin' colors. She was clearly designed by someone with an eye for vibrant aesthetics. Her eyes are large and expressive. She's practically crafted to be one of those friends you can tell anything to. She's a great elephant. Big Top's up next, and I'm a big fan of his welcoming, sweet expression. Though the dark visor doesn't always make it easy to notice. Still, he's cute, and I like his creative name. Paolo has a hilariously derpy look. I'm glad we have a pink elephant in this group, and that nondescript face of his makes him feel even more unhinged. You're probably a pretty fun person if you have him in your town. Opal is... okay. The greens are cozy enough, but I'm not finding much else about her to be particularly notable, outside of the awkward looking decal bangs. At least they're a shade that blends in. Last is Tucker, who's unfortunately the newest low point of the species. It's a shame because I absolutely love the mammoth factor going on. That's a no brainer idea for an elephant villager, but his actual face doesn't paint a very captivating personality. He's fairly grungy looking, with an unfitting indigo eye mask. I previously labeled Eloise the worst of this species, but looking at Tucker, she's certainly more desirable, and quite inoffensive all things considered. Like the eagles, the elephants have strong options overall, with very few low points. The best elephants are Sid, Margie, Axel, and Ellie. The worst, Tucker. Frogs. Considering how many frogs there are, we only have four left to cover, but there's quite a bit to say about these. Drift starts us off, rocking an intense coloration. You'd think he'd stand out more because of it, but I've never heard anyone bring him up. He's a good pick with flashiness I can appreciate. Frobert's similarly forgettable, but likable all the same. His spots are a particularly alluring feature, though I'm not surprised he gets lost in the crowd. Green frogs just kind of blend together. On the other hand, Camel Frog is very well known, probably a result of his on-the-nose name and distinct pattern. I've never been a fan of traditional camouflage print myself, but he's a fine villager and certainly has his fans. Lastly, there's Diva, and yup, I know a ton of you are not fans of D.Va. Totally fair. I get it. She's pretty freaky looking with those eyes that cut right through you. It's the whole look, though. Garish gaudiness in one tiny little package. She doesn't offend me as much as some other villagers with a similar theme, though I admit she's not exactly a treat for the eyes. But you could do worse in the frogs alone. I'm also gonna call out Tad, who I didn't give enough credit to last time. This is a really simple and lovable frog design. I mean, I know he's another basic green frog, but he's so cute and friendly looking, he's gotta be a top pick of the species, and deserves to be featured as such. The best frogs are Lily, Tad, Rattle, and Ribot. The worst, Huck, and Jambet. Goats. Huh. Just... Billy's left. Okay, easy. Billy is... Meh. 
pretty dang meh. There's not even much of a reason. He works, he's just totally bland. The goats don't make a very strong impression in general, but for how small this species is, there are enough good designs here. Even so, if they were removed entirely, I doubt many people would notice. The best goats are Sherb, Kid, and Pashmina. The worst, Velma and Nan. Gorillas. We all know how these went last time, but it's not all bad for the two remaining members. Louis is the weaker of the pair, a lobotomized Donkey Kong if I've ever seen one. There's an unsettling quality to how spaced apart his eyes are, but he could be more offensive. Caesar's not only better, but looking at him more is one of the best designs of this species. He gives off a friendly vibe with a palatable enough design. His simple features ensure he's a lot easier to digest compared to most of the other apes. I overlooked him on my initial rundown. My feelings on this species are still pretty much the same though, it's an overtly unappealing selection. The best gorillas are Hans, Caesar, and Rilla. The worst, Boyd, Al, and Violet. Hamsters. Two little hamsters remain. I glossed over Flurry before, but she is one of the cuter members, with a charming snow white coloration and sweet face. I like her name too. Hamphrey looks stupid. He's going for an agitated look, but has rather simplistic angry features. I don't know, he's a bit run of the mill for a cranky. He's He's an alright choice, but there's not much going on here. This species is really desperate for a highlight. Marlo is a step in the right direction, but they need more than that to get pulled out of irrelevancy. The best hamsters are Clay and Hamlet. The worst, Rodney and Graham. Hippos. Another pair left behind. Rocco is an alright hippo. Unimpressive, with a tinge of unwanted, but altogether benign. Biddy's about the same, honestly. Not really appealing, but treading the line of unappealing. Yeah, I don't dislike either of them, but they're markedly unexceptional. As for addendums, I was absolutely overly harsh on Bertha in part one, whose design is, I admit, one of the better ones of this animal type. I've had enough time away from her to separate my personal irritation that she wouldn't move away and acknowledge she's a solid normal villager and a standout of the hippos in particular. Bubbles can eat a urinal cake. The best hippos are Biff and Bertha. The worst, Bubbles and Hippo. Horses. Good god, I have nine horses to talk about. At least I like this species. Let's start with Renee, one of the newer villagers and a marvelous sisterly option. She has a nice sense of style, tasteful makeup, and an easy to get along with vibe. We're off to a great start. Cleo's up next, a cute horse with a fairly rare coloration for a villager. Her hair's nicely styled and surprise, I'm a fan of the sparkling eyes. There's a certain charm to Clyde that's hard to put into words. It's likely we've all met someone like this who gives off the this kind of dependable older brother aura, and I guess that's what I appreciate about him. Just me? His design's nothing to write home about, but he's a good guy. Winnie is a little plain, but the star on her head, that you can barely see in this lighting, does save her from being only filler. She's a sweet but unmemorable peppy. Annalise is another villager design. It all works, it's just so bland? Uninspired? I'm sure she has fans out there, and is probably a top pick for natural towns, but I'm willing to bet most people have no clue who this is. Ed is not understated. I can't really pinpoint the look he's going for. I guess alternative sums it up, and yeah, this works if you're into that, but there are a bit too many clashing colors on his face for my taste. You'd think Buck would be more off-putting considering how angry he looks, but I don't know. Something about him works. He's not a favorite or anything, but I'm glad he's here. Elmer also exists, and actually just beat Annalise in a race for the most boring and underwhelming horse design. Look at him. He screams, I'm a horse, and that's it. And and yeah, he certainly is a horse. Victoria remains, a quite charming final note to the group. I love her racing horse motif and striking palette. Her house is hilarious too. For addendums, let's start with Poppy. He's based on an Okapi. A lot of people really wanted me to say that, so there you go. The truth's out there. I chose Peaches as the worst horse before, but looking her over again, there's a fun flavor to her air, and I no longer consider her the lowest point of the species. I wouldn't say I outright dislike any of the horses to be honest, but for which horse I find the weakest, well, Elmer is a little too conceptually underwhelming and doesn't look very fun to be around, so he is the new low point. The best horses are Julian, Roscoe, Poppy, Savannah, and Renee. The worst, Elmer, kangaroos. Wow, what an exciting bunch of kangaroos to discuss. I have quite a few changes to make with this species, but we'll deal with who I previously glossed over first. I wish I liked Astrid more. There's a lot of 
potential here with the stars, and I even like her name, but she looks like a toxic, belligerent loudmouth. Keep her away. Kit's pretty nice. I like the rings around her eyes, and there's an appreciated, carefree quality to her aura. One of the better options, for sure. Carrie is... Oh boy, is this 100% grade A prime villager I see before me? Why did they even bother with this one? Rooney's one of the two male choices, aside from Walt, who is okay. He helps add variety to the selection, but there's very little going on here. Speaking of Walt, I actually didn't talk too deeply about him before, but the older aesthetic he's rocking is a rare one for villagers that's also great for variety. He's probably the most notable kangaroo on concept alone just because of that. His scar is pretty cool. I was previously brief with Mathilda as well, who I want to give a lot more credit to. Her black and purple combo and self-assured expression paints a very effective snooty villager. This is a good example of a simple yet impactful design. I'm also moving Marcy down. She's good, but honestly not one of the finest examples of this group. The kangaroos ended up having a lot of changes after giving them a second look, but it's still one of the weakest species overall, desperately in need of some all-star members. The best kangaroos are Mathilda and Kit. The worst, Sylvia. Koalas. I was pretty harsh on the koalas last time around, and my feelings on them haven't changed much. They still look completely ridiculous. Of the three remaining, Sydney is actually adorable. In fact, I'm surprised I missed her before. She looks like a sweetheart, and her comfortable purple coloration is super cozy. In fact, she's an easy best for this species. Ozzy is not. He has to be one of the dorkiest villagers in the game, and I've never been a fan of the name. He's a major pass. That leaves Eugene, which, oof. The glasses, the mutton chops, the jacket, blech. And another name I've never cared for. Oh, and Melba? Still overrated. The best koalas are Sydney and Faith. The worst, Eugene and Gonzo. Lions. All of the lions have been covered, but frankly, they've been growing off of me more by the day. Enough to newly be dubbed one of the six worst species in the game. I hold lions in a fairly special place, so it pains me to do this, but outside of Elvis, there's almost nothing worthwhile here. This does mean we'll be taking another animal group out of the worst later on, which is nice, but yeah, this is a terrible solution selection with a barely justified existence. The best lion is Elvis, the worst, Leopold, and Bud. Mice. Sweet, only a few left. Dora looks kind. A bit unremarkable, but she works, and white with blue is always a nice combo. Rizzo is interesting, if anything, with an inspired thief motif. Motif. I mean, he kind of looks like he'd be a skeevy asshole, but villagers with a novel concept are always welcome. And that leaves... Wait, who's left? I'm sorry, who is this? But Bettina? Uh, yeah, sure. She's a villager in the game. The best mice are Rod, Chatter, Bree, and Samson. The worst, Limburg, Moose, and Greta. Monkeys. The three remaining monkeys to review all have pretty nice designs. Flip is very likable. He has that well-meaning goofball energy you don't see too often. Not bad at all. Deli is agreeable, but a bit basic. He's an option for those who prefer more grounded villager designs, and fills that role quite well. Shari is last, and I'm a fan of her peculiar facial features. She's cute, and her color and patterns lend her a unique appeal. The monkeys are still an unremarkable species overall, but Tianxing's glorious addition to the group has helped them become more relevant than ever. The best monkeys are Tianxing and Tammy. The worst, Elise. Octopi. Well, since there are only four of them, we already discussed each of these in depth. But even so, I have a notable change to make. Before, I claimed Zucker as the weakest link of the species, but I'm changing it to Octavian. His brilliant red body and angry look make for an effective cranky design, but it's such a strong color of red that it actually kind of stresses me out. Zucker doesn't do any of that and still looks good. It's a small change, but one for the sake of being as accurate as possible, and I still stand by all four octopi having great designs. Each one brings something different to the table, and I'm elated that a stellar new fourth option was added. The best octopi are Barina and Cephalobot, the worst Octavian. Ostriches. Another trio to go through, but hold on, all three of these are great. Blanche is up first and is seriously owning that quiet dignity. She looks a little uptight, but is nevertheless appealing with very pleasing features. I'm surprised she isn't more popular, honestly. Julia resembles a peacock, and is it any surprise the 
these vivid colorations are my thing. The green, blue, and white look wonderful together, and the look's enhanced even further by her snazzy tail feathers. Gorgeous eyes and a great name, too. Gladys remains and is the most adorable yet, with a particularly down-to-earth look that really works. The white, black, and red play off of each other, giving visions of majestic, serene cranes by the river. Her tasteful aesthetics solidify her as one of the better normal villager options, with a natural look that fits in just about anywhere. This species has a strong selection when you really look at them. There's not a lot of filler here, with both flashy and understated choices. Nice variety, but I do wish they were a bit more expressive. The best ostriches are Sprocket, Phoebe, Gladys, Cranston, and Julia. The worst, Sandy. Penguins. I'm starting with a correction I'm sure some of you are waiting for. I previously stated Hopper is based on an emperor penguin, when in truth, he's based on a rock hopper penguin. You know, like his name suggests. Oh, silly me. Anyway, we have a lot of penguins to get to. Boomer's up first, a classic, relatively well-known villager, and he's okay, somewhat plain, but I'm willing to bet he has more fans than you'd think. He's like the teddy of the penguins. Wade has a rather standard design, but with that being the case, has a good amount of likability. The way his white and black colors blend into each other looks so cool, I'm surprised the style isn't used on more villagers. He's a quality member. Frigga has classy features and colors, and is an adequate snooty, but man is it getting hard to find anything interesting about these penguins. This species just has really basic designs, and while very few of them are overtly unappealing, there's also very little here that's especially outstanding. They're so conceptually samey that this species blends together more than any other. Case in point, here's Puck, who, yeah, he's a penguin. He doesn't look too bad, kind of endearing, but nothing special. The end. Igly's one of the cuter members. That's it. Cube was the first penguin I ever had back in the GameCube title, and stands out to me for that reason alone. I do like his name and cross eyes. Gwen is another typical, subdued looking snooty, and sure, she works. My only change with this species is taking Sprinkle out of the best, but even so, she's still an above average penguin villager. Oh, and Aurora? Still overrated. Say hi to Melba again. The best penguins are Hopper, Rold, Wade, and Chabwick. The worst, flow. Pigs. Four little pigs to go. Let's start with Maggie, who's easy on the eyes due to her cozy orange spots, but I'm not sure what I think of the face she's making. Lucy's an above average villager due to her inviting smile and cute outfit. This is the worst kind of decal hair, but her sweet expression allows it to not take too much away from her. Spork is... an oddball. He's not the worst, but there's something kind of off about him. Line through the eyes is something to appreciate at least. Last is Panchetti, who, yeah, I'm not into to the sultry look. She makes me think of an outdated cartoon character. Also what, her name's a reference to pancetta? Salt cured pork belly? Yeah, don't do that. The best pigs are Hugh, Agnes, and Boris. The worst, Truffles, Chops, and Curly. Rabbits. Jeez, another nine to cover. Real talk though, these are pretty good villagers. To be expected of one of the best species, although I'd be lying if I said some of these weren't filler. As completely unnecessary as he is, Doc is an adequate start. But I wish they didn't change his eyes in New Horizons. He used to have white pupils, which looked a whole lot better than these beady ones. That's a pretty big downgrade. His blue fur is too overpowering now, and his eyes are barely noticeable. On a more positive note, Bunny has an adorable, charming look with a fitting normal personality. I'm surprised I don't see her get more attention, honestly. She's probably the most universally appealing rabbit I glossed over in part one. I suppose her design, while cute, is rather generic, proven by how often her inoffensive form is used in marketing. Tiffany is much more of an acquired taste, but her underrepresented style is appreciated, and she wears the bad girl look better than most. Not for me, but it's distinct for the rabbits, and she definitely has her fans. Bon Bon is a fairly standard villager, nothing offensive, with a simple, clean look. She's actually kind of boring, which I'm sure is blasphemy to some of you. Claude is... almost good. It's the combination of a unibrow and half-cocked eyes that don't paint a flattering picture. It's a shame, I feel like he's so close to being a nice design, but that face, man, that face. Speaking of faces, Cole's makes quite the impression. His features just pop so intensely out of his pitch black skin. I could see reading his expression as either absent-mindedly baby or odd and terrifying. He's okay. The right person will love the hell out of him. The same can be said for many villagers, and Gabby's a good example. She has a somewhat nerdy, best friend vibe going on that I'm sure many find relatable and easy to connect with. That said, her face needs 
work. The stark decal hair, pink freckles, and huge staring eyes are hard to look at. She's one of the weaker rabbits. Ruby is continuing the trend of disturbing staring. There seems to be some kind of alien association going on with her, looking at her house at least. Her unflinching blood red eyes say it all. And wait, she's peppy? That seems completely unfitting. <sighs> This is better. Hopkins, a charming little blue rabbit with a cute smile. He's a breath of fresh air after the last few creepy villagers, with nothing to suggest otherwise? Huh? The best rabbits are Sasha, Genji, Carmen, Mira, Coco, Chrissy, and Francine. The worst, O'Hare and Pippi. Rhinos. Another trio left to cover. Hornsby is easily the most beloved rhino I didn't discuss before. And yeah, he's certainly one of the better ones. His simple design combined with a sincere expression secure him as a likable member of a mostly unimpressive species. Renee would be next and uh, really with the sailor shirt? I kind of like the face she's making, but this is a design dissonance if ever I've seen one. And what's up with the doily hair? There's a good idea in here somewhere trying to get out, but I'm shaking my my head at this execution. Tank remains and is probably the poster villager for rhinos due to his traditional gray color palette. He's a bog standard jock for sure, but not a bad choice. I do love his authentically natural house. The best rhinos are Meringue and Azalea. The worst, Rhonda. Sheep. Quite a lot of fluff left to cover. We pretty much have to start with Dom. My word, do the people love Dom. Dom is alright. He's kind of cute, but also kind of annoying looking. I like him, but not entirely. There's this unspoken insistence to his energy, like he's the sheep version of Steven Universe. More power to you if he's your guy. I'm not surprised he has fans, but I wouldn't have thought he'd be this beloved. Next up is Willow, with a yellow and pink coat that sounds garish in concept, but actually looks quite nice in execution. She's a bit vanilla, but her meek face is sweet enough. Kurlos is the last of the three males, and is easily the most forgotten with such strong competition. He's a fine pick, and rather chill. Timbra is your usual snooty villager with an attitude. She's probably one of the most unmemorable villagers of the lot. I guess she's supposed to resemble a pinecone. I've almost never seen her brought up and yeah, there's not much to see here. Eunice is in a similar boat, but is at least a lot more welcoming. Still a villager at her core, but works well as an understated design for players into that sort of thing. Muffy is a classic sisterly villager for sure, and unique icon of the sheep. There aren't too many gothic themed villagers, but man is she dedicated to the theme. The purple on black looks beautiful, and while her face can be a bit creepy, it's mostly the good kind of creepy. The kind many players will want lingering around their towns. The best sheep are Pietro, Etoile, Vesta, and Muffy. The worst, Frida. Squirrels. We have a handful of squirrels to get through still, though being one of the best species, there are thankfully some highlights left. Case in point, Silvana, who has a cute design that's easily overlooked. It's both understated and unique. The way her patterns swirl around her body makes me think of cinnamon rolls, and that is an easy way to rise through the rankings. Mince up next, and while not as impressive, is a likable enough design. Her namesake and color palette certainly paint a refreshing picture that fits her upbeat personality. While I'm normally not a fan of bangs that stand out against the rest of the palette, this one sells a mint chocolate aesthetic that is making me realize sweets make a great base for charming squirrel designs. Nibbles has an eye-catching coloration that looks okay. She's another villager giving off that incessant peppiness vibe that doesn't work for me, but she's adequate. Hmm. So Blair is clearly going for a simple, dignified quality, but this look bores me to tears. Granted, I don't think there's really anything wrong with her design, but it's a little too dusty old school teacher for my liking. She's awfully unremarkable. Agent S is not doing it for me. While I like the little superhero motif she has going on, I don't care at all for her expression. And Peppy on her? No thanks. I hate how dark the visors are too. It's like she's peering at me through a root beer. Pecan remains and is pretty rad. I'm digging her reddish brown coloration. Nice outfit and a cute name too. She's a very solid squirrel that would fit in a lot of towns. The best squirrels are Peanut, Marshall, Ion, Static, and Pecan. The worst, Sheldon. Tigers. All right, there's been a major turnaround for these tigers. While I still believe the core tiger model needs an improvement, outside of Rowan, none of these designs are specifically unappealing. Even though many of them are forgettable, these are more or less respectable designs, and they're no longer one of the 
six worst villager species. Congratulations, tigers! Of the three remaining tigers, I definitely miss Bianca last time. She has a very beautiful snow leopard aesthetic and is easily one of the highlights of this species. Classy and refined. Leonardo is a bit plain, but his attractive leopard pattern looks great. I'm not into perpetually distraught looking villagers, but he works. Claudia is the last of them, being the only tiger with an abnormal color scheme that looks outright gaudy on her. Her half-asleep face isn't doing her any favors either, implying a very unexciting personality. She's not terrible, but clearly one of the weaker offerings. The best tigers are Tybalt and Bianca. The worst, Rowan. Wolves. I actually talked about every wolf last time, but I do have some changes. I previously stated Kyle had a hyena motif, when he's actually based on an African wild dog. It's a cool style either way, but you can consider myself corrected. I also previously listed Vivian as the worst wolf, and like I said before, I wouldn't say any of the wolves have bad designs, but looking these over again, Dobie is the lowest point for me. I don't find his facial features especially pleasing, capturing a cranky old wolf a little too well for my liking. I totally get it if he's your thing, but I prefer Vivian and her sophisticated air over him. The best wolves are Fang, Sky, Whitney, and Wolfgang. The worst, Dobie. <sighs> That was an ordeal, but it's worth it to be thorough. And if I stepped on any toes and you're about to write a so-and-so is actually a really nice villager comment, guess what? All of the villagers are nice. There are eight personalities in the game, and they're basically all written to be your best friend. We're a long ways away from how they spoke in the old days. But I digress, we're not finished yet. It's time for the final results. These are the best and worst villagers of all the various categories. The six best villager species are cats, deer, eagles, rabbits, squirrels, and wolves. The six worst villager species are cows, gorillas, hippos, kangaroos, koalas, and lions. The six best lazy villagers are Mo, Sasha, Marty, Sherb, Biscuit, and Stitches. The six best normal villagers are Fauna, Celia, Margie, Marina, Skye, and Etoile. The six best jock villagers are Genji, Tiansheng, Bam, Rudy, Kitkat, and Sprocket. The six best peppy villagers are Peanut, Shino, Tammy, Tangy, Carmen, and Cookie. The six best cranky villagers are Sid, Apollo, Fang, Fret, Roscoe, and Static. The six best snooty villagers are Diana, Judy, Olivia, Whitney, Anka, and Bree. The six best smug villagers are Julian, Pietro, Cephalobot, Marshall, Zell, and Kid. The six best sisterly villagers are Cherry, Quinn, Phoebe, Mira, Agnes, and Pashmina. And, of course, the six worst villagers of all the villagers are Boyd, Barold, Limburg, Benjamin, Rowan, and Bubbles. Done and dusted. Every villager reviewed and recorded. With everything I said, I want to take a moment to reiterate something important. These are my opinions, and I respect any differing feelings you may have on these characters. No matter who it is, if you love them, I support you 100%. Animal Crossing is all about creating your own space, filling it with what you like and what makes you happy. So own your style and make it yours. I'd also like to take this moment to thank everyone for watching and supporting my work. Today is the two-year anniversary of releasing my videos, and I'm happier than ever to be sharing my passion for games and critiquing with you. With the Animal Crossing villagers now completely behind me, I'm interested in knowing what you might want to see from me in the future. So don't be shy. Share any ideas you may have. And as always, thank you for watching. If you liked my video, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Alright, here's some more. The six spookiest villagers are Lucky, Rodeo, Roscoe, Cole, Chester, and Muffy. The six dreamiest villagers are Julian, Judy, Ione, Etoile, Stitches, and Pietro. The six most cherished villagers that I snubbed are Kiki, Tutu, Bubbles, Melba, Tipper, and Alfonso. 
<laughs> Thanks again, everyone.